Awesome. Hopefully you can see my screen, yeah? Yep, all good. Okay. Okay, um, welcome everyone. Thanks for attending. Uh, it's exciting already. Uh, I can like uh, see some good vibes uh, starting now. <laughs> uh, we'll just a little bit of an introduction on what we're going to cover today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about visual development um, in video games or mobile games specifically, and also can be applied to animation. Uh, since we have like a time limit, I won't be able to cover like, you know, everything in uh, great detail, but this would be a very good head start for you guys. So you would know what to expect as a visual developer, um, as, as a position of the visual developer in any company. Um, now, just, you know, a disclaimer at first, if you're working for a mobile game company, it differs a little bit. Uh, when you're working with an animation company because it's all about the details. So you have, for example, let's say higher quality details for animation while you have uh, your, you know, like it's mandatory mainly to have lower details for mobile uh, games because, you know, uh, for the render engine and so on and so on. So uh, in this uh, session, I'm going to go through what is expected from a visual developer uh, when it comes to the uh, job description mainly and what you should expect from uh, the request of an art director. Now, um, so here we're going to talk a little bit about character, story, color, and environment. All of these things is what a visual developer is expected to do. So you're expected to do character design. You're expected to uh, enhance the story. You're expected also to work with color keys and also environment creation and all of these things are still with a visual developer position. But however, uh, nowadays you have mainly a job or a job title for everything. So you have character designers or people who just do character designs. And there are storytellers for people who just, you know, create the story. There are even uh, color artists as well who uh, add the color uh, keys and, the key shots of specific scenes, which of course we're going to talk about uh, later on. And there are also environment artists, concept artists. So you have so many uh, job positions that are specified for one thing in this huge visual development world. So as a visual developer, of course, you've seen so many posts for uh, jobs asking for a visual developer. Now you're not expected to do every single thing because at the end, like you can't do the entire visual development for let's say an animation all by yourself. You always have to have people that are specified on working with something. But one of the job that you're expected to do as a visual developer is to set the entire world. To make, to get it in other words, uh, words, sorry, it's called world building which is um, working on the world, deciding what works, what does not work. Uh, what is this world made out of? Um, you know, we can go with fantasy, realistic, you know, it doesn't matter really to whatever you're going for. So as a visual developer, you're expected to work on all of these things uh, to um, mainly build up the world and environment for the director. So you pitch it later on to the director or even a very big group of artists. And the fun thing about visual development is that you always have a back and forth and you have conversations going on. So let's say if you pitch one idea and another visual developer who is, let's say, experienced in um, concept art, uh, they can tell you that this works and this doesn't work. So there's a lot of feedback fun feedback mainly so you can change your idea in a way that works with everything else so uh, this is about visual development in a nutshell <laughs> really huge world but a super fun thing to experiment with you get to do so so many things varied things even and not having to be uh, specified into one uh, certain uh, job position so before we go further just a little bit about me um I am mainly a visual developer, illustrator, character designer, uh, whatever you want to call it. I just like the all-in-one 
so everything that is uh, related to world building, I do uh, color keying and everything. It's just the idea of creating worlds I'm very interested in. Uh, I do illustrations, I do card illustrations as well, uh, book covers, um, character designs. Um, you could check all of my work on uh, Instagram. Uh, I used to teach before as well. Um, recently, just recently, <laughs> I became a full-time freelancer. Uh, I've been teaching for a really long time. So now I jumped into the freelancing train. <laughs> now I'm working just for uh, clients for mobile games and also animation. Uh, some of my work uh, includes uh, some, hang on, okay, some character designs, let's say. Uh, one of the very fun exercises that I do, especially like to get the gears going, especially when I'm working for character design, is to pick an existing show and to redraw it in my own style. Uh, but as long as the uh, mainly the spirit of the show remains. So here, let's say we have a SpongeBob. Uh, we all know Patrick Starr is not actually a human, but he's, he's really one of my favorite characters right now. Uh, Squidward is my number one character. Second is Patrick and then Mr. Krabs. But let's not, you know, rant about SpongeBob right now and my obsession with the show. But um, uh, this is a very fun exercise. So whenever you want to like um, try to uh, practice character design, you can do this technique. It's really fun, it's really enjoyable, and you can actually learn from these uh, shows. You can learn how characters have different shapes, have different uh, color schemes that even reflect in their personality. So that's one. Uh, I also do uh, card illustrations as well. Um, this is this is very fun for me because I get to be um, creative with character design and the environment and working in a painting that where everything has to be um, you know um, in one piece maybe or to give the this um, sense of specific feeling. For example, this one is fear or mystery. You know, like there are several things that you could do with card illustrations that are also uh, very fun to do. Uh, and also, um, I do as well like separate illustrations for fun, could be portraits, could be, you know, anything that is um, related to fantasy. I like serialism, symbolism, all of these things. I think they're very fantastic. So also as a visual developer, you're expected to do these things as practice because uh, having to work with different sets of colors or content or whatever, will also like benefit your mental library in a way. So you'd have more ideas in your head if you've been ever put on the spot at some workplace and you're expected to do something, but in your mind, you already have done it before. So your visual library, your visual mental library will be better and more rich if you do exercises like this. And of course, um, some splash screen artwork. Now I know this is cropped in a weird way, but I took these from my portfolio, so you can check them on our station as a whole view. Uh, so splash screens and all of that is all related to uh, what I generally do. Now, um, this was an introduction about me and uh, what I do. Now we're going to uh, hop on to the content of this uh, course or lecture or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> let's call it the fun introduction to visual development. So the content that we're going to cover will be first about concept and story, the importance of story. Mood boards, of course, we're going to talk a little bit about characters, key shots, specifically color keying, environments, props, and concept art. Now, these things that I have mentioned in the content is what, uh, what's expected mainly of a visual developer. But of course, as I said before, you don't have to do all these things like religiously. Uh, you need to just have an idea about each and every one of those so you can know how to build a world that works from all ends. So it works with story, it works with personality, characters, the colors, the feeling that invoke the, uh, the viewer or the player if we're going to talk about games as well. So as a start, um, we're going to talk uh, first about concept and story. Um, the main thing that I see with visual developers, uh, especially new visual developers, is that when they're working on something, they always have 
very uh, fancy um, detailing, very fancy colors. And the thing that really strikes people the most is the story. So to become a visual developer, you need to have a great story. Now, what is a story? A story, we all know what it is. It's, you know, basically it has the um, introduction and then you have the problem or the main, uh, main issue that the main character is facing. And then you have the ending. So as a story, this is how it looks like on the shallow surface, if you might call it. But uh, when we're working with visual development, we have to be a little bit more specific with the details that is working. For example, when you first want to create a story, you always have to define your keywords. Now here, I'm going to introduce to you a story that I have came up with previously, because of course, like, you know, coming up with a story on spot is going to be a little bit difficult. So I prepared it before. Uh, we, I came up with specific keywords, like let's say force protector, spirit, and guardian. So from these three keywords, I have created an entire story, which I will share with you next. First, in the uh, story or how you're going to come up with a story, you basically need just five important things. I, you know, basically writers, uh, usually of course they have like a more detailed uh, map of a uh, story, but I think these five uh, steps are the most essential things. So you don't really need more than that if you're working with visual development. So first you need introduction, showing the daily life of the main character. If you come up with a character in your head, what is this character? What does he or she do? Uh, where were they born, what's their purpose, their goal, and so on, so on. So you start to dissect the character more into their life and what is the main goal of this character. Now, the problem is the second thing that you should think about. So what is this character facing? So it could be facing, let's say, a threat, okay, that let's say it, um, it affects their daily life, or it could be an enemy. So of course, like in classic comic books, you have you know the hero and the villain. So there is always has to be this relationship between the two, so you can keep the story going forward. And then number three is help. So characters, let's say they meet some friends along the way that become uh, true friends or sidekicks. And, you know, you could add the funny element to it. You know, the the, the friends could be the, the funny people. You might say so. It could like improve the story better, make it more funny or whatever. Or they could only be there for emotional support to the character. And this is a way also, I think that part three is very essential because you get to introduce new characters in the game or the animation. And that's always fun. Uh, number four is the climax, which is the, you know, it's different than the problem because the problem is the general threat that the character is facing. When you have the climax right there is the, um, the peak problem that the character faces. So you have, let's say, the enemy almost defeats the main character physically or emotionally. So you have the character uh, on the ground, he's defeated and everything, and everything seems, you know, um, uh, you can't really uh, win against this villain or whatever. So it would give the viewer a feeling of hopelessness. And this is what drives the character into the end. The end is the resolution of the entire story. The character could defeat the enemy. This is, let's say, ending one. Or people, lots of people overlook this. Other option is that when the enemy defeats the character in the end. So when an enemy defeats a character, it could be an ending, but hopefully it could be later on a possible sequel. So this does lead you in a way so you could develop the story more. So you could use this technique as well when you're creating a story. So when we're creating the story, we have to keep, of course, these five things in our mind. So of course, before I have created a story very quickly based on these five steps. So I came up with a character that is called Root. Root is, let's say, a newborn spirit that roams the forest to protect it against its main enemy, the flame keeper of forest fires. Say, I have thought of something like a character who lives in, he's a, or he or she or whatever is a tree spirit um, that, uh, whose main common enemy is the forest fire because, you know, forests mostly have, the, their main threat is a forest fire. So the forest fire is represented into a character which is called Flame Keeper. Uh, Flame Keeper threatens to destroy a major section of the forest to expand the ash realm further. So this is the main problem. 
the main problem is the goal of the villain and what the main character is, you know, um, fighting against or with, you know, depends on the story that you're going for. Uh, Root set on a journey to discover his origins and stop Flamekeeper while making friends along the way. So this could be, you know, the part where he gets help with his journey or his, uh, you know, goal, mainly. So Root finally faces Flamekeeper and fails to stop him when the fire starts and spreads in the forest, leaving Root emotionally defeated. So this is the climax right here. So Root, when he fought, let's say, Flamekeeper, he was defeated. And then um, emotionally, he, he felt hopeless. So this is the climax. So in the end, Root is able to defeat Flame by diverting a river towards him with the help of his friends. So this could be the motive towards the end. But in the end, uh, the, um, you know, Root finds new forest spirits are born and hatching from ash-filled grounds. You know, uh, when um, we have a forest fire, some trees actually use the fire, the heat of the fire, so their seeds could grow. So some seeds from some trees need this intense amount of heat so they could, you know, hatch or uh, sprout mainly into new trees or new plants. So fire in a way is essential or forest fires is essential for a forest. So this is the end or what you are expected to learn from the story. So Root then makes peace with Flame Keeper as his existence is essential for the continuation of life. So this could be the end. So hey, this could be the story that we're going for. When, once we finish this uh, presentation, we're going to do a live demo where we try to uh, draw Root, draw Flame Keeper, draw some key shots and everything that I mentioned here. So part two, after you have come up with a story, part two, which is very, very it's a very important step, a step is to create a mood board. Now, for a mood board, you need a mood board for each character because each character has a different theme. Now for this mood board, um, what I personally do is look up other character designs because I'd like to see how other people could push a character into something that is different, that is creative, that's out of this world, fantasy. So I find inspiration in other people's work. Um, if you want to go to build a more mood board that is defined on one subject, so let's say that root is made up of, let's say a plant, okay, or a fern. You could make a mood board of different fern trees or fern plants or whatever, different photos of them, and try to create this mood board on the, um, uh, the, uh, the way to change this character's look, but still be inspired from, let's say, a fern. So in this mood board, the main character, I wanted to go for something cute and small because in the end, Root is a small a forest spirit. So we don't need to go realistic. You could go realistic with the anatomy, but it's completely up to your choice. So here I found um, this character right here. Uh, I really was interested in the, the eyes. Uh, I find that these eye glow like in here and here, uh, they bring a very nice sense of mystery to the character and also cuteness at some point, if it's not like um, more into the scary side. Uh, I really like, for example, uh, this character that has layering on the clothes, so we could use that. Then I have seen this character that is an animal hybrid, so not necessarily a person. Uh, could be like the forest spirit is a warrior with a shield and armor and a weapon, so we could explore that. Or it could be an animal with, you know, this, this eye shape that I like. It could be something super cute, you know, made up of earth, soil, mixed with rocks or whatever, so you have endless possibilities right here. Uh, some silhouettes of the characters, so I could just explore how could the character look like. Could the character have maybe a big head or a big lower body, maybe big feet or, you know, big hands. It doesn't matter, whatever, as long as it fits the silhouette, the silhouette that you like. It could be, let's say, uh, I really like the, um, the horns or the branches as horns. It adds also to this tree or nature feel. And also the eyes, the set of eyes right here is very interesting to me. And uh, when I collected these images, every single image has a purpose of why I added it to the mood board. So here in the first one, you can see some smaller characters. So they could be the, uh, 
the friends that Ruth meets along the way. So it could be something like this, maybe hybrid animals of some sort um, that join Ruth into the journey. Uh, then we have another mood board, let's say for Flamekeeper. Uh, since we have uh, decided first to go with a cute look, I still included some realistic uh, photos or some realistic anatomy, maybe semi-realistic, let's say, or stylized anatomy of characters. It could be a very scary looking warrior. It could be something like this, maybe uh, a demon-ish kind of look. Uh, what I really liked about this one is how fire has a really nice flow to it. So you can paint fire in any shape and it would still look hot or it would still look like a flame. So having to use this silhouette for a character, I think is super interesting to have this approach. You could also look at the other examples like maybe different styles. So here is up to experimentation to know what you need to create. Uh, it could be uh, an animal as well. It doesn't have to be a humanoid creature. It could be completely a different animal, or it could be realistic. So something like this with the fire hair that is super cool. It always shows like danger or power. And this one, what I really liked about this is the line fluidity of the character. So you can see that this character can easily jump around because of the shape and the melted feel so it does add a little bit of interest to a fire character so this is a mood board for the antagonist or the sidekick you know it could be something the sidekicks could be something like this maybe i haven't have a clear idea yet about what the characters might look like but something like this would be interesting to look at now after the mood board is done once you have a style in mind or once you have an approach in mind then you're going to have to work with characters now character designs is, um, or character design maybe, is a very, very huge um, field uh, that has so many tips and tricks to achieve the best type of character out there. There is so much back and forth with the character because in the end, the character is what's most important in the story or in the game. If the character does not look cool, you don't play the game. For example, let's say um, Assassin's Creed, so the, uh, the main character in whatever sequel, the main character still looks like an assassin. But um, let's say we downloaded a different skin for this character and now we don't like how this character looks like. So we do stop playing this character at some point. Uh, so designing a character is very essential because it makes the animation uh, a success or it could be a fail. So if you're going to work with a character, make sure that it's an original character or something new, and it also reflects a personality or um, mainly um, the likes and dislikes of the character. So first, uh, for our character designs, we have some steps that we need to put in mind. First is, of course, defining the style and shape of the character. So it could be a cute shape, it could be a realistic shape, humanoid, it could be an animal, it could be anything that you want to go for. Now, as I, you know, explain this, it would be very fun if I would see um, your interpretation of Root <laughs> and Flame Keeper. So we can see mainly how different characters could be, you know, when we're approaching one, um, one topic. So let's see you sketching, for example, Root. How do you imagine Root or how do you imagine Flame Keeper? So let's see this at the end of this uh, session. So next we have to think of course of the main features that is super important. Most characters are memorable because of their features. So uh, if you already, let's say, um, let me think of a character, uh, whatever up. Okay, okay, let's, let's think about Teletubbies. Do not ask why I thought of one. That's literally the first thing that came into my mind. So the Teletubbies, of course, you all know them. What defines them? How would you know them up uh, from a silhouette? It's their big belly, mainly, and their big legs. So when you imagine that, you directly imagine the character. So let's say uh, Mickey Mouse, okay? Mickey Mouse has the known three circles, one in his head and the other two are his ears. So if you see them in a silhouette, you directly know it's Mickey Mouse. So having main features is super important so you could define your silhouette because the more people memorize your character in their heads, the more successful a character is. If you're going to go for a super 
super uh, detailed character, you still have to be careful with the silhouette. The silhouette has to be uh, prominent, it has to be clear, and it has to be memorable. So you could go with um, circular characters, as I always mention that actually, circular character, characters always show that it's a cute character when hard edged characters are more serious. So um, it all depends on the personality that you want to go for. Uh, the third thing is thinking of color combinations. Of course, that depicts personality. Uh, of course, you have seen, I don't know if you have seen actually Inside Out, very, very amazing, amazing animation. Uh, they played the color. I'm not going to spoil anything, by the way. I'm just going to talk about the characters in case you haven't seen it. So in uh, Inside Out, you have the characters that are different colors. So let's say uh, Joy is colored in yellow. Anger is colored in red. Uh, we have disgust is in green and so on, so on. So these color combinations fit personality. So when you're creating a character, uh, having to think about color psychology is also essential for when you are working with a character. Now at the end is um, think simple shapes. So when you go with a very simple, simple shape, it would be more memorable, but also you have to know the difference. For example, if you're going to work for a mobile game uh, character, the mobile game characters are always known for their bulky shapes because when it comes to the rendering engine for mobile games, you shouldn't go with um, characters that are super detailed unless you simplify a little bit of their uh, body or the geometry maybe. So you would have a more successful character that could be, you know, if I open my phone, my phone won't crash because the character won't be this detailed. But if you're working for an animation, if you're going for, let's say, um, a high-end animation, of course, your character could be as detailed as you like. But of course, there are some restrictions, which obviously we're not going to cover right now because the restrictions are incredibly, incredibly, it's a long list, okay? So just keep that in mind. If you're going for mobile characters, make it simple. If you're going for animation, you can go more into a detailed look. Uh, now, for the characters, people mostly overlook this one is the accessories. Um, every single character needs to have an accessory attached to their body. The accessories should first have a purpose. For example, let's say um, uh, any character, let's say they're an adventurer. So as an adventurer, they should, let's say, have a backpack. Okay, it's, this accessory is essential for the continuation of the story. It's also essential for the character. Accessories shouldn't also overpower the design. For example, if you're going for, uh, let's say this character that I have uh, designed right here, these two couple, um, uh, one of them is a scientist who is very um, interested in plant studies. And you also have another scientist here who is interested in insect studies. So I don't know the correct terminology, but I just call it insect study or insect scientist, you know. Anyways, uh, these two uh, people obviously have a, a nice and cute relationship going on. So, um, and I also wanted to show that these characters um, are in a journey. So this character has this glass um, box on her back. So she could uh, collect the insects maybe that could glow in the dark light her way as she walks through forests, could be something like that. And um, also wearing a glass face mask or a plastic face mask, you know, as well to, let's say, protect her from dangerous insects, bees or wasps or, you know, something like that. Um, and this scientist, let's say he has several pots, plant pots on his back as well. So he could keep them for study. And also he has a sidekick that is a fly eater as well, because he is mostly interested in plant studies. So this is an example of accessories. When you look at this one, the accessories does not overpower the character. So when you're looking at the character, you're not looking at the accessory first, you're looking at the character. And this is what is most important when you're creating accessories. Always know or keep in mind that accessories should be a secondary thing to your character. And next is the placement of the accessory should be away from the character's focal point. Now, our uh, brains are focused more on, um, like whenever we look at something, a drawing, our brains are wired. So we would look directly in the eyes of a person. 
So you look first in the eyes and then you look into the face and then you know uh, you start to explore more of the uh, visual forms. So it's exactly the same in character designs. When you're creating an accessory, make sure that it does not overpower the main focal point of your character, which is in this case, either the eyes, the mouth or the nose. The character could have a big nose, let's say. This would be the most important feature of the character. So when you're creating an accessory, do not try to cover the big nose because the nose is, you know, the focal point of this character. So make sure you stay away from the focal point so you could have, of course, a successful accessory place. Now there is something um, at the end that also is uh, overlooked, especially in mobile gaming. If you're going for a mobile game that um, the, uh, let's say the strategy of the game is to, let's say collect coins. So you would um, upgrade your character uh, or buy, let's say a helmet. Okay, so upgrades for the character, a helmet, some boots or a backpack, whatever, it could be anything. Usually character designers do not have a good synergy, you know, like some cases, of course. Uh, there is not a good synergy going on with the game development team. So as a character designer, you always have to um, be up to date with how the game is supposed to be. So if the game is based on that, so you would pay, let's say your coins, so you would unlock some accessories, you have to keep space on the character for these extra accessories to be added. Let's say um, you need, uh, you can upgrade your character at some point in the game with a big backpack, okay? You should not add so much details on the back of the character because at some point you're going to unlock an accessory and add it directly to the character. So make sure you just know how the game works and also how the animation works as well. It could be applied to animation if there is going to be a change in the character itself. Um, so this is when it comes to accessories. Next, you have a character sheet. Now, when you're working with a character, uh, of course, you have seen lots of things online, like uh, when they present a character, the character is always placed in, let's say, a T-pose, front, back, and side. So people usually do that because it's a reference for the 3D modelers. So when you have a character and you want to make it into 3D, or even also animated in 2D, it's not just 3D. Uh, people or the other people on the team need to know how this character looks like from the back and from the side. So this is also an essential step when you're creating a character. Uh, in the character sheet, you can also include some pose exploration. So here you have also a character that I have done. Uh, it's um, kind of like, I um, don't know how to explain it well, but it was just a character out of form. A character that really likes to eat oranges, <laughs> uh, does a lot of parkour, always lives on rooftops, super fast character. That's why I have like the long tail. It was inspired from um, Marsupalami. I don't know if you have seen this cartoon. I'm very old, so <laughs> this cartoon Marsupalami is like, I think it's a leopard with a super, super long tail. So it's, it used to be my favorite, favorite show on TV. I used to watch it every day before school and um, was always inspired by how the character looks like. It's such an amazing thing. And also as a character design is super successful because um, uh, it, it's like very memorable. Like when you look at the tail you, or when you imagine a very long tail, you always imagine this character. So um, this character pose exploration was inspired from the cartoon show. Uh, when you create pose, ex uh, uh, pose uh, exploration, you always leave room for exaggeration. So let's say in animation, uh, if you have a character that is jumping, okay? So of course, uh, some of you maybe have worked with animation before, you know, like there's an obvious stretching of characters. When a character jumps up, the character does not stay in the accurate body proportion. You have a little stretch going on to show more exaggeration. So when you do these pose exploration, you actually uh, give uh, like, uh, let's say uh, limitations to the animators or the 3D animators as well on how much you can break the character, but without having to look super broken at the end. So you are always like um, um, in control here, especially as a character designer. And of course, when you hand in the character pose exploration to the animator, 
the animator will give you their tips as well on what works and what does not work. But it's a very nice thing because let's say here, you have this character. When this character jumps, this, this orange bag that is attached to her side, let's say flies, on, uh, flies away. So it shows more movement. Um, let's say the, uh, this one here. So when she is jumping upwards, the legs do you know, crunch a little bit. So it would show that there is a more momentum being prepared, you know, so the character would jump somewhat. So this is you know, important to discuss later on with the animator or even 3D animator. Uh, including detailed close-ups, also, if you have, uh, let's say here, okay, if you have this bag of oranges that is very essential, obviously, for the character, you can apply on the side, you can apply on the side a close up of this orange packet, okay? Uh, the, since it's important, it's important for the 3D artists or the animators to know that this specific accessory on this character is important. Let's say the eye patch here. I don't know if you can see it. Well, the eye patch right there. So this eye patch here, um, it's not zoomed in well, but it's a drawing of an eye. <laughs> so she drew an eye on her, <clears throat> sorry, on her own eye patch. So this could be a nice close up to add in your character sheet as well. So the 3D artist would know exactly what is important to sculpt and what is not. Uh, so this is when it comes to character sheets. Now we're going to move on to part four which is, uh, <clears throat> or which are key shots or color keying. Uh, after the, you design the character, you're expected to do some key shots. Now, um, I have chosen one of my absolute favorite, favorite games in existence. <laughs> well, when it comes to platformers, of course, because I have several other favorite games, but when it comes to platformers, Ori is an incredible, incredible piece of work. And every artist, I really, um, encourage you to play that game. Uh, the two sequels, actually, the second sequel, The Will of the Wisps, was an incredible piece of artwork. Every artist should play this game. The colors are incredible, the characters are super pretty, and the storytelling is just mind blowing. And to me, I think this is a phenomenal job for a game. So I have taken Ori as an example to show you what key shots are, what color keys are. Uh, color keys are mainly um, helpful for the main story. So let's say you have Ori. I'm not going to spoil also the game. So it's just some uh, concept art, general concept art of how the game is. So no actual spoilers will happen. Uh, as you can see in these thumbnails, uh, as a visual developer, you're also expected to do color keys. Color keys set the mood and the goal of the character. And what is this character going to do? Mainly. So at first, you have an introduction. Maybe this character could be enjoying a very peaceful life and so on. The character, the color, sorry, will, uh, will have to be super bright, super colorful, because nothing is going on, obviously. Then when the threat happens, the colors start to darken a little bit. So if you notice here, the colors start to go more into um, here. I think it's more here. So the colors will start to go into darker, desaturated colors. And this is also uh, an example of how the difference of the colors happen if you compare it to, let's say, these thumbnails right here. So colors are very important to set the mood and to set the story of how this character is, uh, you know, um, or what is this character facing on their own journey. Now you see here, this one <coughs> is considered the climax of the story where the uh, mostly the character almost gives up and so on, so on. So notice how the colors are even much darker here than the problem, the main problem mainly of the story. So once you dissect your story into color keys or into different color combinations, then your entire world would be super accurate. It does not matter if it's an animation or a video game. So, intro, so example, introduction of the setting, you have the climax and the main threat, and then you have um, character personality, maybe it triggered the development. Maybe the character has changed in some way. Or, uh, and of course, at the end, you have the ending. 
So these things that, of course, I have covered first when it comes to creating your story, uh, these things you have to keep in mind when you are creating color keys. Uh, this is also another example of different color keys. Uh, they also set the storyline of the sequence. So bright colored shots show peace, you know, and um, mainly the character not facing any problem. Dark or intense colored show, shots, for example, show the main climax or the main threat, and so on, so on. So you can start to, uh, you know, as you know this information, you start to notice these things, whether it's on TV, whether it's on your, whether you're with favorite, watching your favorite show or playing your favorite video game, and so on, so on. So I chose Ori because the color king is uh, very accurate to the storyline, and of course it helps set the mood. So if you're looking at, let's say this uh, shot right here, it does feel a little bit depressing and sad. When you look at this shot right here, it does feel that this character is going more into a brighter area or something that is more peaceful for the character. And notice in this color, shot, color key or uh, key shot in specific, notice how it's cut in half. So you have first, uh, the first side is the complete darkness and you have this side which is light. So it does show that the character is, let's say, moving from a very sad emotional state into a more, a more peaceful, let's say, okay, emotional state. So having to dissect your colors like this is very, very important for your storyline. Um, next, after key shots, of course, you have your environment. Uh, environments, or we're going to talk a little bit about props, is also a very um, fun part for visual developers. Uh, also, I took the example from Ori because it's not just the color keys, it's also the props that are just exceptional in design. So go on and play this game. I really urge you to do that. <laughs> so when it comes to props, uh, you can see that these trees are not the trees that we usually see in life. They're more stylized trees. You have a tree that is, let's say, bent on the side. You have trees that have these uh, aura holes or like energy placements in the trees as well. So you can explore so many things with props. And a tree does not have to look like just a tree. A tree could be, look anything but a tree while still having to show that it's at the end, it symbolizes a tree in some way. So you can play around with how different the uh, shape is with props as much as you can. And here is your major opportunity right there is to push the design as much as you can. Uh, here you can see some um, uh, corals or it could be some uh, maybe um, rock formations or whatever, it could be anything, anything as long as it is pushed out of its original design. Uh, now, there is a difference between props and concept art. Of course, props is just having to design specific, um, um, let's say trees or rocks or whatever that is vital for the story. But when it comes to concept art, concept art is close to key shots, but it's more detailed. It sets the mood, it sets the um, detailing of the story. And of course, it sets the main journey line of the character. So I have some examples here of some amazing concept art. You have this one right here, where it obviously shows a story. When you're a concept artist, you always have to think about story. You can't be a concept artist and just show a tree, like for example, this one, just a tree, okay? But here, as a concept artist, you can notice that this small detail right there, the sword that is plunged in the earth right there, it could tell a story. Now imagine this tree is without the sword. It could be just, you know, a regular, very normal tree that probably does not have any story at all. So as a concept art, it would be a little weak. So once this small detail was added, it just changed um, from a regular painting of a tree into something that is worth thinking about. So what is the sword? Who put the sword there? Is it a grave, let's say, of someone? Did uh, someone put it there? You can see, let's say, a mountain here at the end and a sword. So obviously maybe this character has left the sword and went to, you know, adventure or maybe they died here. You'll never know. So, so many possibilities because of good storytelling. 
Here we can see also a concept art, an amazing concept art actually, of one of the, the moments of a character's journey. So we have the character here and there, that's a baby elephant that is uh, beside the character. You have a very important scene of game or slash animation, could be anything, of uh, the statue that has a waterfall from the eyes, you know, something like this really gives off a nice opportunity to think about story and to let the viewer even maybe wonder what is happening in this specific shot. So when you're working with concept art, keep in mind a story. So you have here uh, this environment. Uh, of course, it's delivering a vibe and a better presentation because it's green and it's glowing. So it's a magical swamp, we could say that. But having to look at the swamp, of course, we all know what a swamp is. It has like lots of trees and, and algae and uh, lily pads and stuff like that. But once we have seen this Roman column right there, or any, any type of man-made sculpture, it would also give you another sense of what could have possibly happened here to the point that this sculpture or statue or column or whatever is destroyed. So having a sense of story in this concept art is very, very important to having a successful presentation. Uh, this is also from Ori as well, uh, concept art. Uh, you can see here that there is the main character and you have, you know, that like the villain, you have the small, small character. You can obviously see the size difference, which adds more to the fear, especially because the entire color scheme is desaturated and blue. And you also have this concept art right there, which is mainly a shot of how the game works. So sometimes when you're a visual developer or concept artist, they ask you if you're working, let's say, for a video game, they ask you to prepare a concept art of the game. Now, like how would it be playable? Ori here is a 2D platformer, okay? And you only have the character moving sideways. So having to present a concept art of how the character is jumping, you can see here in the concept art that you have a little trail right there of light, which I think is a super smart way to add movement to the character. So you obviously can imagine that this character was here and the character jumped from here to there. So having to add these small details in concept art is actually incredible because you can add movement and introduce people or the people maybe who will invest in your game, mainly how will the game look like? So preparing concept art of how the game will be playable is also an incredible mainly presentation for your idea. Uh, and of course, something like this, something, uh, this concept art I really like because of their introduction to color um, and goal. So you can see here that from the left side, which obviously the character came from this side because this character is facing the other way. So this character has come from this side. So you can see red, you can see orange, you can see some fire, maybe colors. So this character might have just exited from a very dangerous place. And when you come here, you can see that the character is at the center and you have this color that is bright, pink, you know, uh, peaceful, relaxed. So you can obviously know from the story that this character has been passed through a lot of ordeal. So they could come, for example, let's say to a peaceful side of this level. So working with color, this is why I say working with color is essential, especially when you're working with concept art, it could give you a sense of goal to the character. So when you have very dark colors, it shows the sad mood or sad goal of the character. And when you have lighter colors, it shows you know peace or the goal or the happy ending if you wanna go for that. Uh, so at the end, this is one of the amazing, amazing artworks that I have seen, honestly. Um, also concept art of the introduction of another villain that is opposing the main character. You can see how small, super small the character is and how big and threatening the main villain is, let's say. Um, you can also see the color green. The color green um, adds a little bit of a sense of toxic and dangerous, um, probably hurts you if you touch it maybe. So in this sense, once this character is um, 
once this color, sorry, is added to this character in a sense of a contrast between super dark and super light. So the character here, the main spider, is a super dark, dark character. So you can't see any detail at all. The only detail is the colored green. So once this green is added to the contrast of like blackish color, the green changes from the color of vitality and plants and environment, you know, and happy things to something that is toxic and dangerous. So color combinations is super important as well when you're working with concept art. So if you go with super dark and highly contrasted color, even if you choose pink. So we all know that the color pink gives a sense of peace and relaxation, especially uh, pastel pink. But when you combine it to something that is darker, like let's say we have this spider is a dark, uh, or a black spider, and you have these instead of green, you have them as pink, you would still be scared of this character because the main character overall is a very dark color. You can't see any details and you have pink on the side. So pink would show that it's also toxic and it's also harmful. Uh, so this is the end of the presentation. <laughs> um, I have talked about the things that um, matter most when you're working as a visual developer. Uh, I don't know how much time do we have left? So I would see. Uh, honestly, it's up to you. We have another course at about 8.30, so we should end before that, but up to you. You can take as much time as you need. We can take a break if you'd like to. Uh, yeah, we would take a break. Maybe some people would prepare uh, sketches of fruit and flame keeper. Because I need like 30 minutes just so I could do a live demonstration of um, the world. Of course, of course, uh, we can take a break and then uh, if you want, we can take some questions and uh, start sketching. <laughs> yeah, I'd like that. Okay, uh, so everybody let's meet back here at, uh, let's say, seven, like in 10 minutes at 40, 740. Mm -hmm. Is that good? That's good. Yeah. I'll be back. I'll answer some questions and then we could go with the demonstration. Okay, amazing. Okay. Chef beat me too. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have, uh, Wally has a question. Uh, um, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so. My friends. Okay, so you said that uh, if I'm gonna do an art style for a game character, for example, I should do it a little bit more simple than, for example, animation, right? But mm -hmm. what if I'm trying to make a game that has like a visual novel side? It shouldn't I focus on both? Like, for example, in the gameplay, it's it should it like in the gameplay be simple, but when it ever the visual scene is on. Should I make it more uh, detailed? Oh, so you're talking a uh, visual novel. So a visual novel has some cutscenes of uh, detailed looks of the characters. Is this what you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it all depends on the type of game. Uh, if you're, uh, you know, like uh, Lords Mobile or whatever, you know, any of these games on your phone uh, usually are playable characters. So if the characters are playable, their design is simple. But if you're talking with a visual novel, then you need to have an engine that would handle having a detailed character move. So if you're going to add this detailed character uh, into a cutscene in a visual uh, novel scene or a shot, uh, you could go detailed, but still it does not need to clash with the playable character. So if you have a playable character and a visual novel, it is best to stick to a simplified character form because at the end you're going to move this character and you're going to have this character be played so that's why you need it to be simplified but if you're going just for a pure visual uh, novel game uh, like uh, no characters being controlled or moved you can go as detailed as you like so it all depends on the gameplay like what is the game supposed to be like and how is it easy or what what is the limitations or difficulties if you're going to go for a detailed character so it all depends on what type of game you're going for. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, 
Uh, Shadi, you can go ahead. I wanted to ask that I already like used to, and I still do study a lot of like character design stuff, uh, be it articles, um, videos, whatever. I just have really not good digital drawing skills. My pixel art skills like get me like are good enough, but I don't know where to start with like digital drawing. Mm -hmm. So I was asking yeah. if, if you know something that could like help me to start. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there is no shortcut. <laughs> It's just, uh, just keep practicing. I know it's a very cliche advice, but um, it's a thing that has proven to work a lot of times. Uh, if you're just sitting there, you can just try at first to uh, practice anatomy because you need to know realistic anatomy before you go into stylized characters. Uh, because once you know the realistic anatomy, you can know what you can stylize, what you can break, what you can remove while still having the character look like the way that you want it to be. So my main advice, of course, it's the cliche advice, but it works. Start with realistic anatomy studies and then go for color. Before you start color and digital painting, you need to learn how to draw anatomy first. Once you do that, you can move on to color theory. I, um, I think that there are so many good tutorials online on color theory. And also, once you learn that, you have to move on to the actual painting side, which is blending, knowing how to blend carefully, knowing how to add your different lights when you're painting, and so on, so on. So you have different stages. But as a start, it should be anatomy, then color, theory, then painting, which is blending, and so on. And then you can go for detailing and stylization. So it's always in this uh, thing. Uh, uh, yeah, well, with pixel art, it's mainly the same because you do need to know realistic anatomy to also create pixel art. Um, but still, you know, like the more you can practice and the more you can work on the actual painting, uh, then you can achieve what you want. So you can start with um, practicing blending techniques on Photoshop or Procreate or whatever software that you're comfortable with. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mustafa, you can go ahead. Oh, uh, hi. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm a reasonable 3D artist, but I have this issue every time I do a thing. I feel like um, I'm a bit blind color theory wise in the sense of uh, mm -hmm. like I've been looking at the thing for so long and it always looks bad because I kind of made it but people think it looks okay but the thing with color theory is I'm basically asking for good references just so when I look at the thing and yeah the colors are okay or the colors need to be different so uh, what are good references to knowing stuff like pa what palettes I should use I'm sorry if my question is a bit scattered, but <laughs> oh, can't no, find the words. It's, it's very specific. You know, a funny story. Uh, my sister and I were talking about this exact subject yesterday. And um, what, we were just saying that when I first started digital painting, I was also considered colorblind <laughs> because I had no sense of how things should be colored or in what way they should be colored. So uh, the way that I started uh, was uh, looking at different pictures and starting to study the color uh, and to associate feeling with color. So let's say this really helped me a lot. So let's say I'm doing an angry piece. I focused on red and oranges, like the fire colors or the hot colors. If I'm doing a magical piece, I focused on purples. So as I went with this uh, theory um, in my mind, um, later on, it started to make sense. So it's just practicing on how you can uh, combine feelings with color. So once you oh. do that, you can, you know, like uh, go ahead with detailing later on. So this okay. is really good. If, if I may follow I up question. Because <laughs> uh, uh, listen, we're kind of similar, but we're kind of different in a way that uh, most of my work is photorealistic or probably something that has to do with interior design or something of that nature. 
but I don't yeah. have a degree in that. So uh, I'm not sure why the couches look <laughs> stupid. You know what I'm saying? And the uh, someone's linking something in chat. I'll check that out. Oh, mm -hmm. look at all the links go. Uh, there's a website, the Adobe Color. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there's an there's an uh, accurate website for it. Oh, Coolers, yeah, that's it. Uh, Adobe Color has a really nice uh, generator where you put on a keyword and it generates good palettes for you. So you can try that. Okay. Uh, put in chat, I think Sasha. Yes, okay. Sasha. Thank you, Sasha. Uh, <laughs> listen, Sasha, I'll message you on Discord. Please message me the things. Yeah, it, it is a that's very okay. Uh, I, I guess I'll talk to Sasha on Discord later. Thank you for uh, answering me, you guys. You're welcome. Um, any other questions? Okay. Well, uh, I think uh, we can go on. Thank you, Dalia. <laughs> okay, awesome. So let me share my screen. Um, okay, it should be working right now, yes. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, um, so as I uh, sketch the characters, try to explore how uh, root and flame keeper might look like. Uh, you can also try to sketch along. And also, if you have any questions as I sketch along, it could also be nice to answer them. Um, so, first, when it comes to root, um, the initial mood board that I had set is something cute, you know, small, simple. Maybe as for a mobile game instead of an animation. So it could be more of a circular character and um, not really hard edged because we're going for something that is cute and nice. So the body could maybe be very circular. Oops. I mean, the main shape could be something like this. Uh, the hands, you know, I'm trying to go super simple right now because of time constraints. If you want to go with something uh, more detailed, then you can, of course, uh, go for more a realistic character instead. So you can have, let's say, the eyes are really big, maybe very cute smile. It could be rude. You could have... Um, Maybe horns, not really sure. Let's see, we can experiment with it later. But the main shape would be something like this. So I really like how this shape is. Uh, I could just take this. Now I'm using Procreate because um, to me, I think this software is really good with uh, being consistent in your work. And you can mainly just draw anywhere. And that's a very good plus. So I um, encourage you to use uh, Procreate. Uh, so once I have this main skeleton ready, I start to add more details on the character. Like you could do something like this, maybe like that. Maybe the hands are a little bit long. Uh, maybe we could, we could give him some hands. So it could be something like this, perhaps. And it could be holding something. Not really sure what it is yet, but we will see. But um, these characters, the character ideas really happen as you go. And so there is really no specific accessory or specific detail that you could go with. But as you're going, you can explore different things. Could be doing like that. You could have like maybe longer legs, something like this, maybe. 
something like that perhaps I really think right here I'm just going with something simple um he could be since he is a forest spirit protecting the forest he could be wearing maybe an armor that is made up of a wood block maybe <laughs> so all of these things you can Just think about uh, perhaps he has instead of these things which i think are a little bit distracting <laughs> Um, it could be more naturey, so you could have like two plants, maybe. Could be something like this. Maybe he has some fruits right there. No clue cool yet, but you can, you know, explore as much as you can. Uh, we also have. He could be wearing like this belt. There could be a backpack if he's going on an adventure. And once I have this kind of rough um, character design, I could just start with liquefying because it helps a lot with just forming the main shape. So once I liquefy, for example, I want to make him shorter and not this tall. And I could also make the head a little bit bigger because you know this trick, like the bigger the head, the cuter the character looks like. <laughs> so you could go with this. Um, could be something like that. And you could not have eyes. You know, you could do that, but I like it without eyes. And then nose, perhaps, something like this. And you could also take this head and maybe make it a little bit bigger. Just like that. So you might have something similar. He could be holding a, I don't know, some stick. But let's make him hold a stick. Because <laughs> he's cute and adventurous. So he has this prized stick that he found on the ground that he always uses. So it could be something like this. So it could be something like this character. Uh, like, oh, a candle. Yeah, that could work. Maybe this is the main light source. So let's say this stick is has a little aura here. Maybe this could be his source of light. Something like that. So could be, you know, something like this. So notice how it started off with a very simple shape like this, and then it ended up with something like this. So of course, like because of time constraints, we're obviously not going to develop him further, but you kind of get the idea of how it should start with just um, the main shape, and then you go more into details. So once you have this, I also, I usually do that my characters in three stages. So first is the main shape, which is this one, and we also have the other reformed or refined shape. And here is the final stage that I do, is just uh, trying to clean up the character as much as I can and omit or add details, depends on what I want. So here, uh, by the way, the good things with these two, this is that you can add so much personality and emotion with the character. So let's say the character is sad, these two things could drop downwards and he might look sad. So it could be something like, you know, it could be like wilting or something. So you could add so much uh, personality and emotion with this detail, uh, especially when you're doing character sheets. So this helps. Now with refining the character, what I'm doing is that I'm simplifying a little bit the, uh, the shape because I don't want this much details in my character, especially because I'm working for a mobile application. So th these fruits will be something bigger and more prominent. So we have something like this. Now he looks like a mistletoe, but it's cute. <laughs> uh, we have the hand, very simple hands. He's holding something like this. The, the stick that is also a candle, which has a light source. And one tiny leaf right there, because it's cute that way. Have this shape. 
We have a say a gem, gemstone that represents, let's say, the spirit that he is, that he is. And the backpack, of course. We have the legs. Let's make him barefoot because it's cute. And something like this. So this could be the main character that I want to go for. So once I have this main character, I could go forth with, with coloring. Oh, you know what? Let's add. I think there's a lot of visual uh, weight on the top part. So I need to balance it out with something down there. So I could just add a tail. Let's say it's a leaf. Maybe he could have a tail that's uh, an actual leaf. Could be something. No, here I'm just like improvising, you know. <laughs> could be anything. So it could be like a, <clears throat> a tail that is a leaf. Could also could be wearing a cape, yeah. Uh, but then if, if the character is an adventurer and he's going on a journey, then I'd have to omit the backpack. The backpack is essential for the trip because he's going on a trip. You can also, you know, like a design, a backpack and a cape as well. But I think it hides a lot from the character. And I wanna show, I wanna keep the idea that the character here is round and cute. So a cape would probably hide so much things from the body. Uh, but it's, of course, like it's up to you. So once I have this ready, I take this one and I copy. Because I want to copy the entire thing. Let's work with multiple. You know what? Let me just go faster right here and just duplicate the outline and color underneath because this is obviously going to take time because we still have to color um, props, concept art. We have a long way ahead. <laughs> okay, so just cut these. Just combine these two together. Okay, so in the coloring phase, we can go for like what what do you imagine this character looking color then? Could be maybe this color or this. Or maybe something like that. Maybe brown and dark green. I like that. I like that. So yeah, I think that works. So let's see. The good thing with color is that. Once you start the color, you can uh, just set the main color of the entire silhouette and then use hue and saturation to explore uh, different color options. So you can do that as well. So let's say it's brown and dark green, but first I have to color the entire thing into green color. And then I could add the details using clipping mask. And of course, the more time you spend on painting the character, uh, the more realistic this character would look like. But obviously, because it's going to take a little bit of time, we're going to just like cover the basics of painting. Okay, so something like this. I'm just going to go for alpha lock. Maybe instead of brown, maybe go for this color. Could have this color, and the tail could be this and brown. We could go with this. Okay, and we give the berries on, on his head. We just check the chat because there are so many good recommendations. Oh, okay. The uh, berries on the head, if they were a very different color, um, I usually, when I create character designs, it's usually two or three colors. So more than that, I think it would be too much. Um, but if we're going for the berries, let's say, let's just test it out and see how that works. Could be like that. And also, um, we can make it brighter. 
because as a character, you have to make things bright and more, you know, fun to play. So the character needs to be a little bit bright and happier. Uh, and of course, since we're going for a cute character, that is um, an important thing to keep in mind. So the eyes could be glowing. And what you could do is that you could give them a nice glow. So that could, you know, be something like this. And, okay. Uh, the app is called Procreate. Uh, you use that on the iPad. So you have some shadows, and of course, that kind of stick with this light, lighten this as well. And the main light, it could be a pink color because, um, you know, the rule of having two or three colors for a character design makes it more successful. Uh, so that is better. So the main light could be um, a pink light. It could be like that. That's all up to you. So once you have the main colors ready and you are uh, satisfied with how it looks, you can also duplicate the layer that you have and go to hue and saturation and just check the different color combinations that you could get. So for example, this is also a good color. You can develop this and you can develop this as well. So you have so many color options you can work with. But of course we're going to just stick to this. I think we can make it a little bit yellowish. So more saturation, a little bit of brightness. So I think this is this is a very nice color combo. So if you can check before and after, notice how there is a difference right there. So you can go for this stylization. Now, once you finish your character, you could also try to add more um, uh, light to it. So since the character is already, you know, has a pink light in front of uh, his face. We can also try to add these. These things are really helpful for to make your character really pop. And just add, you know, these things. Just some light and a little, little, little bit of blur. Not so much. And you can go for a darker shade. This color could be like that. I could also add a shadow here because my main light source is from these, the side of the pink um, torch, let's call it. You can also get these, you know, shadows here, maybe a darker mouth, like that. Okay, so. You can have this and you can add some dark to the leaves. Also keep in mind the light source because it's from this side. You can make this darker and we go from this to this. So I think we have our cute root. <laughs> So this could be something to start. Now, of course you can develop it further. Now, if you look at the difference between how it started and how it is right now, uh, you can um, just send this. So how it started in phase one, it started just as the main shape and then it's a more refined shape. Then you have semi-final and then four, you have different color options. Now, the ideal thing to do when you're designing a character is that you take this, okay, and you copy paste it several times and present uh, other color options. So it could be green, it could be blue, it could be purple, it could be whatever you want. So let's um, try to design Flame Keeper. Uh, so Flame Keeper is the villain of the story. So we just to be a little bit closer to the style of the main character. So we work with circular character. Now Flame Keeper could be a little bit more edgy. And uh, we could also give him, let's say, 
a threatening pose. Maybe he is jumping. Let's let's give him a pose instead of he's just like posing there in front. So he could be jumping, he's flying, as we have seen from the uh, mood boards, uh, something that is constantly moving. Could be something like this, maybe. Now here I'm just like exploring how the character will move and how he is shaped like, but nothing in detail. So when you're designing a character, don't think of details at this stage. Only think of how this character moves or how this character looks like. And uh, we could also have him like angrier because maybe he's the villain. Could be smiling, he could be yelling, screaming, whatever, <laughs> whatever you're going for. Uh, I think that for the character, we could give him a flame head, but I think it's too overused. So we could try something else. Maybe, maybe you know, like that reference I showed you on the mood board, he could be having a tail that is fire, not Charmander from Pokemon, but <laughs> an actual fire. Uh, so it could be something like that. Uh, he could be maybe wearing an armor because he is wine keeper, this kind of royalty, could be like that. He could be wearing a helmet maybe or a crown. Let, let's give him a crown. Yeah, I think uh, an armor is nice because he looks like a warrior type, so that would fit. And then we could like, to make him less curvy, we could add the more edgy uh, crown shape that also resemble flames. So it could be like, nothing is too circular because the more circles that you use, uh, the more cute this character looks like. So he could be, let's say wearing, um, Beads on his legs, I'm not pretty sure. Maybe big gloves, perhaps. You know, here I'm going like uh, just improvising a little bit, so it could be like something like this. Um, what do you think? A weapon? I think a flame eyes. Yeah, that could that could work. We could once we color the eyes, we could color them in flame, and we could just radiate energy or fire. Um, we could give him a weapon, uh, side, uh, but yeah, I love fire as well. It's my element. <laughs> uh, flint and steel. Maybe we should, maybe we should give him like, let's, let's make it a staff that looks like a side, but it's like, less um, prominent. So we could have the character, you know, as the main focus. So it could be something like that. Or in case we don't want to give more attention to the weapon instead of the character, we could go for like just, you know, fireball attack maybe. Like his hand could be like a lighter close to a flying thrower, I guess, <laughs> um, something like that. And once we have this ready, we could copy paste that, take it to here, and delete this line for now. And of course, you know, do the same thing that I did before and just try to refine him better. So the eyes, I like that, maybe like that, or maybe he's like, it could be yelling, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Could be something here. Something like flames, but hard-edged flames. Something like that, some teeth and mouth. And I will take this. Put it here. Take it. So 
So, you know, really just trying to see how far we could push the uh, design, but also make it simple. So I'm trying to go for super simple, but also something that works. Something like that. Now you go with a completely uh, realistic uh, character. Now here is the choice that I have made for making a very cute character is completely a personal thing. So you can go for something realistic. It doesn't have to be super cute. So it could be like, you know, something like that. And for this part, I think you should be shorter a little bit because I think it's too long as torso legs. You could be wearing these things. And then uh, super rough, once you spend more time on the character, the more you can develop this character further. Something like that. And of course the fire tail, because we have Groot who has a leaf for a tail, um, to kind of uh, work on the same style and a feeling we could also like add the, the tail to flame keeper as well so once we have um flame keeper we could just duplicate this take this here and just add the colors that that would be the same or similar feel as um as root but of course like a different palette. So when it comes to Firekeeper, we of course need to have like fire colors, obviously, but it's not a rule. Uh, when you're working with fire, it could be blue, it could be purple. Yeah, it could be blue and it does not have to be orange at all. So here we're just going to go with any color and then go with hue and saturation and explore the different colors that you can get. So what I always do is that I choose the most, you know, any, any color in a palette and then once I go to hue and saturation, uh, I explore different options. I mean, he could be purple and pink. Pink is also a hot color. It could be used as flame. It does not have to be. Oh, he now looks like Tails from Sonic. <laughs> you know, something like that. Fire. Okay. So once I have this, uh, I select this, go to hue and saturation, and try to explore the different colors of fire. Now, I think this color is super nice. Uh, could look like fire. It could also be a blue flame. Let's go with blue since we have a recommendation of blue flame. Uh, we could go with something lighter. Uh, gradients, yeah, you can use gradients if you're going for um, a more glowing uh, kind of approach, you can definitely use gradients. Now I'm going to show you an example of gradients. Like for example, if I'm going to go for blue flame and I want some gradient feel, what I do mainly is put the color that I want and then smudge it. But here's the thing, when you're smudging, uh, smudging on Photoshop, I think personal experience, looks super bad. <laughs> uh, if you want to smudge, it is better to start to use the smudging on Procreate and not on Photoshop because the smudging on Photoshop, I don't know why, but it always looks uh, dirty at some point. So it's not this good looking. So when you want to work with gradients, you can just stylize these things and just try to give it a gradient glow. Uh, no, you don't have to buy iPads. <laughs> you can go for um, another software. There's another software similar to Procreate. I forgot the name, but I will check it later and send it to you guys. It's on uh, Android uh, tablets. You can use this as well. Okay, so if I want to go with a hotter color. Okay. 
okay, something like that. Also, just like blend the edges, maybe. And a more glowy feel. You can go for that. And I would have the crown in like super bright. Have here a bright colored. So these are looking like <laughs> just two colors combined. So we can break this color combination with something different. Like we could use, let's say, we're going to go a little bit wild here with the colors. So we could go with this color. And the flame could be, let's say this, could be something like that. And on the edges of the tail, it could be this color, just so we can have a sense of familiar colors. Okay, just go with that. Now, when it comes to the glowing eyes, as we have done before, we could go with this and just give it a little blur, something like that. And now I take uh, the, let's go with, let's go with, let's try out something. So maybe the inside could be glowing. You know, like his, his the, the inside of his entity, it could be a glowing color or it could be dark, depends on what you want. So here we have kind of like a very quick um, a sketch of how root or flame keeper looks like. Now, when I look at uh, flame keeper, I think it's a little bit too saturated when it's compared to root. So I just dim down the colors a little bit and just make them brighter. Something like that. So this, I think, is a better color combination because it fits. Now, of course, anatomy wise, it definitely could be better, but as a sketch and as an initial idea of flame keeper, I think like this is enough to just show you how this character will look like. Okay, so once we have this, uh, these two main characters, uh, we have root and flame keeper, we could go forth with uh, designing props or concept art. Now, I don't think I have enough uh, time left. So we're just going to, you know, wrap this up a little bit quick. I'm going to take, um, going to take these, these entire things, mush them together. Now, uh, people who know me know that whenever I paint something, I directly merge them into one layer because I have this little um, OCD of different layers. I don't like layers. I hate layers. So everything needs to be merged together, <laughs> especially when I paint splash art. Um, it's easier for me to control things. Uh, so. Once I have these ready, I start to think of concept art, okay? Um, let's think of uh, some sketches that would work for the main storyline. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know people, uh, when I used to teach, there were uh, students I had that had so many layers, but at some point it got very confusing for them. Like they would not know which layer is which and they would not know what to group together. So it became a little complicated. Uh, so if you're going to use several layers, it's definitely up to you because, you know, like not many people like to work with one layer or two, just try to organize them better because you're going to reach a point later on with your painting and you're going to be completely lost <laughs> where you're painting and where, you know, painting accidentally on the outline layer or whatever. These things do happen, but personally, very personal experience try to get used to lessening <laughs> the amount of layers that you're working on. Trust me, it's easier to manage. Uh, but of course, you know, if it's more comforting to you, then you can go for it. Okay, so um, when it comes to concept art, let's say, let's work on the uh, home of Root. Like how was Root born? Because the main goal, the, the uh, the general uh, goal of Root is to figure out where and how was he born. So since he is named Root, we can go for the Roots idea. So I Googled and seen lots of really cool ideas and lots of cool pictures of Roots, especially in deep jungles. And if you look here, you can see how the Roots are like interwined at some point. So it could be like 
this is where Ruth was born. So Ruth could have been born, let's say, uh, let's just draw a very nice, uh, like very quick sketch of a tree, okay, whatever. But I'm not going to focus on the upper part for now. I'm just going to focus on the roots because he is called root. So you know those trees that uh, usually are found at the edges of um, uh, a river where they have like the exposed roots to the outside. So it could be, for example, like where root was born. So the root could be kind of maybe encasing like where was he born? Could have the roots like this and the roots are going out like that. The main goal of root is to find out his purpose. So what was his purpose? Why did he just exist? <laughs> you know, isn't all our purpose is to know why do we exist? <laughs> so root could have like this idea in his mind and he's always uh, going for this question. Why was I here? What was my goal? Why did I just, you know, appear? So it could be something like that. Um, these roots could be the place where in the beginning of the game, root could emerge from these roots and you could have this character introduced right there, okay? So once this character gets, uh, emerges from this area, then you will know that this character has a starting point. So this starting point is very important for the story. So it should be, of course, a key shot. So once we're having a key shot, we just want to know like the idea of how it needs to be. So the main idea of this key shot is that we're going to have a tree and we're going to have the main root area, the exposed root area on the top. So you could start with creating thumbnails. Thumbnails are a fast way so you could go for key shots. Now the key shots that I have shown you in the presentation before, they're of course right, rendered and so on because they obviously take so many days to finish, but we're going to just go with a sketch. Um, so the initial sketch could be like a tree. I want to focus on the roots and not on the actual tree. So it could be a shot like, could be something like this. So you would have the roots that are exposed like that. And you would have, like, I'm going to think about something that is kind of like the camera view is from the bottom side. So you are seeing everything towards the top. So you have like a perspective going on. You could play around with perspective. It would add more interest to the story or to the key shot. You could have a route that is uh, going near to the viewer. So like something that is closer to us. These things also add very interesting depth. And you can have like the roots are starting from here. Mm -hmm. uh, the roots are kind of encasing our main character. So our main characters will be, main character, sorry, will be inside this tree. And you will have also roots that are escaping kind of this formation and so on, so on. So here you can see something. So you can have roots here on the side and so on, so on. So once I have my main idea of the sketch ready, of course, I try to um, refine it a little bit better. So let me just make this smaller. So once I refine it, I'm just going to do this super quick for now. Of course, the refining uh, stage takes time to do. So I have this thingy, so the leaves of the tree. So I have... Now, of course, refining has to be cleaner than what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, it's like super quick. So you can clean as much as you can. And the cleaner that you have your outline, the better. But when, when working in concept art, you do not have to have a super clean outline. Because in the end, <laughs> you're going to turn off the outline layer and just paint underneath. So you don't need to waste time on that. You just need to have like 
you know, a quick outline of what you want. But of course, it has to be a little bit clear. Now our horizon is tilted. Okay, so once I have kind of like a clean sketch, uh, I could go for value study, which is simply just choosing what um, what is in front and what is in back. So we have no essence of depth and perspective. Okay, so let me just put this underneath that, just you know, have this ready. Uh, and I will just choose that if the tree is right in front of the viewer, it needs to be, of course, darker. Uh, when you want to sketch something, by the way, it's good that you start with a black and white sketch because it helps you uh, figure out the values and what's near and far. So the farther things are from the camera, the lighter things get. And the most uh, the things that are closer to us get more dark. So I'm going to give the tree or the birthplace of fruit. Just a simple sketch like that. And it could be, could have like, let's say the birthplace could be a little bit lighter because there's an aura maybe going from the inside. Maybe you can see some glows. So if you duplicate that, just add a little glow. Could be a nice touch as well. And you could add a locket. So you could add um, a darker root to the front because this is the one that is facing us. We have something like that. And here I'm going to go a little bit dark, just a little bit. Something like that. So my main focal point is obviously in the center and uh, around it is what I have like my main shape. So I go for, let's say the ground. The ground is going to obviously be put to this and that's opacity. And I could, to give the tree a more defined silhouette, I could go with a lighter color in the back. This, notice how it made the tree pop a little bit better. Uh, so you have this for your light. Notice how I'm merging everything. <laughs> this is how I paint. I just merge everything together. And then I, you know, paint on top. But of course, uh, you're free to do whatever you think works out best for you. Okay, so once I have this, of course, like in the background, uh, you will have um, details, obviously. Like you would have more trees because it's not just like this one tree, you have several other trees. Like trees that are thin, because you know, far, far, far back. And you might also have like roots, other roots going on here because it's a very complicated tree, especially for a key shop. And of course you have something like this. So this main um, sketch is thumbnail number one. You could go with, um, hang on, sorry, okay. You could just go with, okay. So this is thumbnail number one. Once you have thumbnail number one, you're as a visual developer, you're uh, you have to present several thumbnails. Okay, but this is just one thumbnail, just so you would know how we came up with the main uh, concept, with the main focal point, with what should be in front, what should be in back. So all of this actually is a nice start. So once we have this ready, what I usually do is merge everything. You don't have to merge. Um, I could go with since root is a greenish character, what I do is I put everything here on the top. Okay, and then go for color. 
give it a little bit of, you know, color. <laughs> and I could call it pink because his defining color is pink color. Let's call it this color, call it cause jumper, a little bit of blurring. So it could be something like that. It could also have um, some uh, different colors. Let's go for the blue color, bluish purple, darker color, something like that. And we'll just see how it looks like at the end. So great for some. So like that, get a cushion blur, just blur it a little bit. Could obviously see how messy I am where painting, but you could go more um, neat, neater than I am here. So you could experiment with these colors. Like lighten is good. And um, you have this color, vivid light, super good as well. It added the blue that I wanted and also the colorful aspect. Now, a trick that I usually do is use color dodge. Color dodge is one of the best things that could ever exist. <laughs> you could go for, um, let's say this color. You also follow Ross Tran, by the way. Um, he's a YouTuber. He always prizes the idea of color dodge because this is what happens. So when you add color dodge, it gives you this incredible light in your pieces. So you could go with, I chose green. Go with this. And if I don't, if I think that it's too green, I could just go with a different color. So if I go with pink, you can notice how these things even gave a brighter glow. Could also be blue, could also be, you know, like any color. So it could be something like that even. Or pink, but not pink. So something like this. So of course, once you develop this, this sketch that you have, of course it's going to be much better because this is the main thumbnail that you have. So you have your main focal point is here. This is the main focal point of the piece. And this is where um, like here and here, you have these things that are farther away that would give a nice depth. And you also have this root here in the front that also gives you depth because you have things that are in the front, things that, you know, like foreground, middle ground, and background. So this is my background. Red. This is my background. And this is the mid ground, which is this entire tree silhouette. And the foreground is the main tree. So once I have these three things ready, it does give me a good sense of perspective. Um, now here is, how the tree maybe looks like. Once you develop it further, then you could definitely go more into details. Of course, that gets going to obviously take more time. So you would have the birthplace of root. Um, this is one thumbnail out of many. As a visual developer, you're supposed to do like five, maybe thumbnails of those or three, like it goes from three to five. Choosing the best composition and choosing the best um, look of the birthplace, like the tree could not even be a tree. It could be something completely different. But here is the job of a visual developer is to just explore how much you can push creativity out of a simple object. And of course, like, obviously we're not going to have sadly so much time for a uh, frame uh, keeper, but I have seen some really good concept art online of uh, forest fires. What I really liked is uh, this one. This one I think is super cool, this, okay? Uh, because you have like the greens around the character, which is the forest, and you have the main fire, which is in the center. So it's not all fire like you have here and here. You have here is a collection of both the uh, greens and also the fire. So you could go for something like this. So once you, of course, like we're, we're not going to do that because we don't have a time, but you can explore different options, different thumbnails until you can come up with something like this. Um, and uh, when it comes to props, of course, you take things that are known in the world of fruit or flame keeper and just try to develop it further. So, you know, you have several options. So I think we're out of time. <laughs>
And um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer uh, before we can wrap the session up. But mainly just a few notes, you can just go for characters and then you go for environments, concept art, props, color theory, key shots, and so on. All of these things are the job of a visual developer. So if you have any questions, please go ahead. So I'm available. And I hope you like the designs. Honestly, thank you so much, Dalia, for this session. This was amazing. You're welcome. I think I went very uh, in with time. <laughs> 38. <laughs> That's <Sorry>. completely fine. <laughs> we'll just give a little I bit of time before the next session starts. I apologize to the next I apologize to the next person ahead of me. It's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was incredible. Uh, thank you so much. And um, I, I, I linked uh, Dahlia's Instagram for anybody who wants to follow. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, and everybody, please do send us what you draw. I really want to see what everybody does, even people watching on YouTube later on. Uh, and thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. It was very fun. I hope that was uh, entertaining as well. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. It was. It was genuinely awesome. Okay, that's great. If you have any questions, if you could uh, talk to me on Instagram or something, it's all up to you. So. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Take care. We'll see you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>